Good afternoon. I'd like to thank the organising committee for allowing me to present my work today on nicotine pharmacokinetics of modern oral nicotine pouches. The presentation will consist of an introduction. I'll then talk about the study products and the study design, and then I'll take you through the results on the PK data and the subjective questionnaires. And then I'll finish with a summary. It is well known that smoking is a leading cause of numerous human diseases, including lung cancer, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and cardiovascular disease. And it's generally accepted that the harmful effects of cigarette smoking are caused by exposure to some of the 8,700 identified chemical constituents. These effects are not substantially caused by the addictive compound nicotine, which is considered by some prominent regulatory and healthcare bodies to be relatively harmless at the levels of uptake during cigarette smoking. In the past decade, alternative nicotine delivery products such as e-cigarettes or tobacco heating products have been developed with the aim of delivering nicotine with reduced exposure to cigarette smoke toxicants. And it has been proposed that smokers who switch completely to these products instead of continued smoking could potentially reduce their relative risk of disease. More recently, a new oral pouch product similar to Swedish Snooze, which is a smokeless tobacco product, has been introduced. These are the modern oral nicotine pouches. These products are similar in physical form to Swedish Snooze, which is a recognised contributor to tobacco harm reduction. Unlike Snooze, nicotine pouches typically do not contain tobacco, but instead contain pharmaceutical grade nicotine absorbed onto a cellulose matrix in a porous pouch. And as you can see, uh, there's an example of this shown in the slide. Like snus, they are placed between the user's upper lip and the gum, where the nicotine released is absorbed into the blood through the oral mucosa. Due to the simplified nicotine pouch formation, there's less toxicants compared to snus. However, at present, there is little information concerning the ability of nicotine pouches to deliver nicotine to users or what impact the physical attributes of nicotine pouches, such as nicotine content, have on the delivery and pharmacokinetics. For our study, we had six different products. Five of these were the commercial nicotine pouch products, which were selected for the study as they were the equivalent strong nicotine level for each of the particular brands. And these were used in comparison to the Pal Mal Red cigarette. With the nicotine pouches we used, there was different levels of nicotine in the pouches. So for instance, the Lift and Zen had 10 milligrams of nicotine per pouch, whereas the Nordic Spirit and Scruff uh, White Fresh had nine milligrams and eight milligrams of nicotine per pouch, respectively. And finally, the On Mint product had six milligrams of nicotine per pouch. In terms of the study design, this was a randomized single dose crossover study to look at the nicotine pharmacokinetics of the oral nicotine products and a cigarette in healthy adult smokers who also used smokeless pouch products. In total, we enrolled 35 subjects into the study who were aged between 19 and 55 years. And at a minimum, we looked for a 80 to 20% split in the male-female ratio. Subjects enrolled in the study were confined for eight days in the clinic. And on each day, we had a PK session, which was preceded by a 12 hour washout period. The PK sessions themselves were over six hours where blood draws were taken from minus five minutes before the subject re received the product up to six hours. The primary endpoints for the study were the CMAX and area under the curve from zero to six hours. And the secondary endpoints were the nicotine TMAX or the time to reach CMAX and product subjective measures. 
and these were composed of two questions. At this moment, how much do you like the product? And the second one, rate the degree to which you would like to use the product again. This slide shows what the subject would have to do on a typical study day. And this would start with an overnight abstinence, which was a washout period of 12 hours through to the next morning. They were then given the product to use for 60 minutes and the blood draws, as mentioned before, were taken over this next six hour period. Once the PK session was finished, the subjects were then allowed to use their own brand products over the next six hour period before the next washout period would begin and obviously the next product would be administered on the following day. This study was run to ICH GCP and received ethical approval. The study is registered on the ISR CTN clinical registry. In terms of the results, I'm showing you now the nicotine pouch and cigarette pharmacokinetic curves. This is a plot of the nicotine levels in the blood of each of the subjects over the six hour test session and for each of the test products. As you can see, the cigarette delivers nicotine faster than the nicotine pouches. However, all the nicotine pouches tested delivered more nicotine. In terms of the T max, which is time to reach the C max or the peak in the PK curve, this was longer for the nicotine pouches versus the cigarette. The PK parameters themselves, the C max, the AUC and the Tmax are all dependent on pouch usage time. And in terms of this study, the pouches were used for 60 minutes, which reflects the Tmax here, which is around 60 minutes for the nicotine pouches. In terms of that mouthful time, this is twice longer than the recommended consumer usage, and therefore this tends to increase the Cmax and area under the curve compared to that recommended usage. In terms of the primary endpoints of the study, I'm showing here the area under the curve from zero to six hours and the Cmax for the nicotine pouches and the cigarettes. For the area under the curve, this is higher for the nicotine pouches versus the cigarette, whereas the Cmax was higher for some of the pouches and similar in other cases to the cigarette. Other studies on snus, looking at cigarettes as well, have also shown higher area under the curve in Cmax. And again, I point out that the pouch usage time here was twice the recommended consumer usage time. And this will lead to an increase in the Cmax and the area under the curve compared to the recommended usage. In terms of the results for the subjective effects questionnaires, which were based around two questions, Firstly, at this moment, how much do you like the product? And the second, rate the degree to which you would like to use this product again. The cigarette showed highest positive scores versus all of the nicotine pouches. For the nicotine pouches, there was higher positive scores for the higher nicotine content products, and this reduced with lower nicotine content. So for instance, Although the on mint had one of the highest Cmax and the area under the curve values in this study, it had the lowest positive scores in the subjective questionnaires. In terms of subject safety, in total there was 27 product use emergent adverse events reported by the study participants. These product use emergent adverse events are adverse events that occur after first use of a test product in the study. The most commonly reported adverse events were dizziness, headache and restless leg syndrome. Most of these adverse events were mild in intensity. However, there was one which was moderate, moderate in intensity and none were severe in intensity. There was no serious adverse events or withdrawals due to adverse events in this study. 
So, to summarise, this is the first study that we have conducted comparing the pharmacokinetic parameters of nicotine pouches to a cigarette. For the nicotine PK parameters, the nicotine pouches showed a higher area under the curve and a higher or similar Cmax with 60 minute use time compared to a cigarette. It should be borne in mind though that the mouthhole time in this study for the nicotine pouches was twice longer than that recommended for consumer usage and this would increase the Cmax and area under the curve compared to this recommended use. The study shows the effectiveness of nicotine uptake with nicotine pouch products and all nicotine pouches were well tolerated in the study. However, further studies are required to identify average pouch residence time in consumers and average daily use, as well as studies to understand the effects of pouch features and formulations on the effects of nicotine PK parameters, as in this study, lower pouch nicotine levels gave higher Cmax and area under the curve. Finally, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors for their help in this study, as well as A-plus Science in Sweden, who pro project managed the study, clinical trial consultants, who were the clinic that ran the study for us, uh, four pharma in Finland who carried out the statistics and data management, and Anna Farm Europe in Spain who carried out the bioanalysis. Finally, I'd like to thank the conference host organisers and the committee, as well as the session chairs, for giving me the opportunity to present this work. Thank you for your time.